Welcome to Beer and Iron's Low and Slow Beer Brined and Coffee Crusted Pork Roast. This may be the ugliest dish you ever make. It'll be a black nightmare when you pull it out of that stove, but fear not, it'll be a dream come true when you sit down and enjoy this meal. There's just something about the flavor of pork that is enhanced with the roasted flavor of the coffee and the sweetness of the beer we're going to use to brine this roast. We're going to be using about a four and a half pound pork shoulder with the bone in. This recipe does take a bit of planning ahead. A few days before you're ready to create this pork roast, start the roast in a beer brine. Sweetness tends to enhance the flavor of pork. And when selecting a beer to brine with, we look for a beer on the sweeter side. Any sweet or semi-sweet porter or stout will work really well. Our beer to brine ratio is one tablespoon of salt to 12 ounces of beer. We're gonna end up putting this roast in the refrigerator for a few days and we'll turn it about once in a while to keep things stirred up. The salt to use is up to you. A kosher salt is perfect. We use large zipper bags for this process. You want that roast to remain under that brine. The bowl is tapered from the bottom you're not going to need as much beer to fill up that bag as you will that entire bowl to keep that roast submerged. Zipper bags leak, so make a little horseshoe turn in the opening of that zipper bag. Then use a little clip to keep it turned that way. The opening will stay upright easier and reduce that brine finding its way out of that bag. Let that roast brine for two to five days and make note of how long you let it brine. Preparing and cooking this roast is going to start in the morning of the day you plan to cook that roast. After that roast has been in that brine for two to five days, you're going to want to pull that roast out the morning of the evening you're going to get ready to eat that roast. It's an all-day cook. You'll start dinner in the morning and you're going to eat it in the evening. It's going to take about six to eight hours in that oven to get good and fork tender. We're not using this brewed coffee, and we're not using used coffee. We're using fresh grounds for this recipe. Go ahead and turn that oven up to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. First, you're going to want to pull that roast out of the refrigerator and let it rest a bit at room temperature. We're just letting it rest before proceeding. Second, lay that roast out on a tray coated by a paper towel or other absorbent cover. It's going to be wet and dripping. Third, you need to pat dry this roast. We're gonna apply a mustard to the outside of the roast and we need the surface drier so the mustard will stick to the roast surface. It doesn't have to be bone dry, just pat dry it. The roast will not be as together as it was when you put the roast in that brine. Some say alcohol will tenderize meats. Others say otherwise. Me, I don't know. I just know that roasts usually need trussing when I pull them out of beer brines. Now the fourth step is to use some butcher twine to truss that roast. This is an optional step. I keep it simple and I just use a technique that works for me. Is there a better way? I'm sure there is. But easy is as easy does. And easy dozing it is the way I roll. Get a third or fourth hand to help if you need to. There we have it all trussed up and pat dried. Now we're gonna get into the mustard. The fifth step is to add a thin coat of mustard to the outside of the roast. We're gonna use a beer-based spicy mustard, but any mustard will do. This will add some flavor to the pork. Just get your hands in there and get them all coated up good. The next step is to mix up your coffee rub. This is essentially what we're making, a coffee dry rub. It's a dry rub with coffee as the main ingredient. Now the rule I always follow is never add any of the spices, salt, peppers over the dish or recipe that you're preparing. Set a side bowl over so you can catch any that spills over so extra doesn't end up outside of your measurements. Now we're gonna add seven ingredients to this dry rub. You're gonna to wanna to start with a half a cup fresh coffee grounds. They can be caffeinated or decaffeinated. Don't use a fine grind. Don't use wet or used coffee grounds. Use fresh coffee grounds. The same grind that you'd put in a percolator or a drip coffee maker. Add one teaspoon of black pepper. 
one tablespoon of garlic powder, a tablespoon of onion powder, two tablespoons of smoked paprika powder, or just use regular paprika, one tablespoon of dried thyme, and a tablespoon of rubbed sage. But if you're using ground sage, just downsize that just a bit. Blend all your dry ingredients real well. It's gonna end up looking like that seed starting soil you get down at the store when it's time to plant seeds. The next step is to pour the dry rub ingredients into a tray or bowl and get ready to add that trust mustard covered pork roast. Next, just lay that roast right in that bed of coffee and spices and roll it about, covering every side. Yes, it is a bit messy, but that's why they make soap and water. Now this roast initially is going to take on a reddish brown appearance, but it's going to turn black. Black as pitch, blacker than the foulest witch. And if you don't get that reference, I'm sorry, we just can't be friends. Hey, I'm joking. I love every one of y'all. But seriously, did you catch the reference? The next step is to get that Dutch oven ready. The size of the Dutch oven will depend on the size of the roast that you're cooking. I'm going to be using my five quart here. Now you're going to want some room in that pot. Not an excessive amount of room. Some air space, but not too much air space. We use trivets to keep the pork roast off the bottom of the Dutch oven and out of the broth it's going to generate. This roast is going to get tender, tender, tender. And I want my roast to do more roasting than braising. Roasting uses dry heat. Braising, it uses wet heat. This is going to start out roasting. And as the broth is generated, it's going to finish up braising. We'll call it broasting. Well, actually just braising. But hey, roasting is such a fun word. Broasting. Trivets are optional but suggested. Be sure the trivets are made to be used inside of the pot with food and not on the outside to protect surfaces from the hot pot. Many trivets look fancy and decorative, and that's a good sign you don't want to use them inside the pot. There's no searing here. You don't have to sear this roast. Just set that dry rubbed raw pork roast right on top of that trivet or on the bottom of that Dutch oven and place the lid on the top of that Dutch oven. A little secret here is to give that lid a little turn to see if it catches the top of that roast. This will let you know if you have some airspace above that roast which you really want. Next thing you want to do is to take that roast riding in that Dutch oven and stick it in that 200 degree preheated oven for the foreseeable future. Well, at least for the next six to eight hours. Now here we are, ladies and gentlemen, eight hours later. And yes, sir, yes, ma'am, we have had this roast in that 200 degree oven for the last eight hours. Our beverage of choice has changed from a coffee we were drinking this morning as we anticipate this roast has done a bit of changing as well. Let's see what we have here. Here we go. Oh man, look at that. Or, or what in the heck is that? No, it's not burned. This is perfection. This is exactly what we're looking for. Notice there is a bit of shrinkage to that roast and some breakage. Now, aren't you glad we trusted up that dude first? Now, do you see the broth in the bottom of that pot? That's some good stuff there, and we're gonna keep that too. Let's get this out of the pot and see what we have. This is just for presentation purposes. Normally, we just first check for fork tenderness and then pull this roast out in a tray or a bowl and pour off the broth into a jar. Sometimes we just serve it directly from the pot itself and everyone reaches in and pulls out a bit for their plate. But I know y'all want to see it better than that. And there you go. Look at that black beauty. Once you taste this roast, you'll appreciate the depth of that color. Let's take a gander on the inside of that roast. Look at that. Easy in and easy out. This is not a slicing roast like a loin or a tenderloin. This is a pull apart roast that will cut with a fork. The coffee crusted pork roast is not a pretty roast, but then again, don't let that fool you. It ain't gonna look pretty, but what do your eyes know about taste? 
Once you take that first bite, your mouth will sure enough scream at your eyeballs. It's beautiful, crazy. Shredded pork like this works well as a standalone entree with sides like green beans and mashed potatoes with gravy. You can make that gravy from that broth you created for the bottom of that pot. Or you can use it in many different recipes like pulled pork sandwiches, pulled pork chili, pulled pork mac and cheese, and hey, even pulled pork pizza with barbecue sauce and some bell peppers and onions. I may be adding a few dill pickle slices to that too. Well, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this beer and iron recipe. I am Sue Lay and I love to share the magic of my black pots and pans. If you enjoyed this recipe and want to keep up with the going ons here at beerandiron.com, be sure to click that little thumb, hit that little subscribe button, and don't forget that little dinner bell lest we forget about the broth. Just take a strainer over that bowl, and after removing the roast and the trivets, don't forget them trivets, pour the liquid through that strainer. Just store it in a mason jar in the refrigerator. And we're gonna enjoy this broth later. As a matter of fact, we enjoyed this broth later when I made a beef and cabbage stew. Now here's what that broth looks like when we cool it down in the refrigerator. But don't worry about that fat. When you're ready to use this broth, just spoon it out and it'll come off that gelled up broth easy, easy, easy. And we'll see y'all next time on BeerAndIron.com. Now this video goes hand in hand with the recipe page on BeerAndIron.com. You all enjoy this. Let me know how it turns out.